Happy Father's Day, Steelers Nation. In honor of Father's Day, uh, we're going to be talking about Mr. Dan Rooney, uh, former president of the Pittsburgh Steelers, with President Art Rooney II and Jim Rooney, author of A Different Way to Win, uh, Dan Rooney's story from the Super Bowl to the Rooney Rule. So, Art, I'm going to start with you. Uh, what was it like growing up with a dad who had that kind of a job? Well, uh, there certainly were uh, pluses and minuses. You know, the only minus was he, he was away a lot. He traveled a good bit and, and I, you know, he worked long hours. But, uh, of course, the other side of, of it was uh, having a dad in the football business and being able to be around the team a lot. And, you know, he, he brought me around a lot. Uh, used to go to work with him every Saturday morning, things like that. So, uh you know, it was uh, it was certainly fun being around the team uh, in those early days. Uh, you, you know, you have a big family, and your dad had a big job. How did he manage both, Jimmy? <laughs> well, I think Art talked about it. You know, he he did a lot. My mother certainly was very involved in in raising the kids, and I'm a little bit younger than Art. I'm the eighth of nine, and Art's the oldest. So Art and my sister Pat and uh, Kathleen did a lot of uh, uh, well, we. We can't call it babysitting, but they watched all of us. But also, we were part of the organization in so many ways. I was a ball boy. Art was. All my sisters worked in the ticket office. So, you know, we got to see him a lot at work, uh, especially during the summer times. And, and, you know, that was always special to be around him, around Coach Knoll, around, around some of these great and amazing players like, like you and Wolf back in your young years. So it was, it was an amazing experience. But, um, you know, it, it was, I guess – I don't know if complicated is the right word, but but he was very busy and he made sure we were very busy, you know, both on and off the field. All right, what was it like when your dad, you know, you mentioned that in the original question, what was it like when your dad took you to work uh, and uh, you, you, you grew up kind of with that football influence? Yeah, yeah I think the, the good thing, Tunch, was, uh, you know, he didn't, when he brought me to work, he didn't babysit me. I, I was on my own. And so, uh, you know, whether, uh, whether we would go to the office over at the old Roosevelt hotel, I'd wander around the office and get into whatever trouble I, I wanted to get into and would sneak into the ticket office and, uh, act like I was helping count tickets, things like that. And, uh, so it was, uh, you know, it was interesting. And, and my dad, uh, you know, he never kind of, closed the door and, and, you know, kept me out of things. It was, it was great how he tried to include me in different conversations. And, you know, once in a while he'd have to have a closed door meeting, but, but not very often. So uh, I got to hear a lot about what was going on and particularly in the early days, sort of the back and forth between he and my grandfather was, uh, you know, it was fun to, to uh, hear what they were talking about. You know, I, I, uh, Jimmy, I, I loved your grandfather, uh, the chief and I loved uh, y y your dad and you are the Rooney family is the most humble family I've ever met and you know how did that uh, come about well you know my father always said and the, the, the chief my grandfather said the same thing you know, always said don't be a big shot <laughs> so you know that was that was his his statement to to not act that way you know, I think it was, um, you know, for both of them, you know, about getting things done, whether it was, you know, the Steelers, you know, my father's work in Ireland, my grandfather's work in the community or around the church, you know, whenever you, whenever you went anywhere with them, they were engaged in something that, that had some sort of purpose and meaning, and they expected you to, to either be involved, uh, you know, with them or respect what was going on. So it was never about, you know, getting autographs, which we weren't allowed to do, or, or you know, uh, getting to meet someone famous. It was about you. You were there with an objective, and and to you know, make sure you were were attending to that, and 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 really everyone involved. So that was another thing that, you know, both my dad and grandfather were so good at is is sort of everyone in the the situation, whether they be you know a famous player or you know, someone that was, was on the staff, you know, at, at some end that, that we were supposed to treat them the same way and treat them with a tremendous amount of respect. So I think that those are, are some of the basis of, of how I observed it, at least when I was young. 
You know, I can see uh, the, the way your grandfather and father have rubbed off on you both. But um, well, how would you say your father rubbed off on you, Art? Uh, you know, Tunch, I, I would say that just his basic values that, you know, that he lived by. And, you know, we, we always talked about faith, family and football. And those were kind of the, the key things in his life. And uh, so, you know, his his faith in God, his, his dedication to his religion were things that uh, that fortunately, I think, rubbed off on me. And uh, also his, you know, his commitment to his family, uh, you know, as we talked, even though he was extremely busy and had a lot of things going on and, you know, had phone calls coming in at all hours of the night, things like that. You know, he, he always uh, made sure we understood how important we were to him. And, and uh, we, you know, we, we were a priority for him as well as all the other craziness he had going on in his life. You know, your dad was a peacemaker and uh, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, primarily in racial r relations. Also with the union versus the labor movement. So, Jimmy, what, explain that. Yeah, when, you know, in researching the book, I talked to people who had worked in labor. I talked to people who were heavily involved in the creation of the Rooney Rule and the people in Ireland in the peace process. Um, and in all of those cases, you know, they talked about a couple of things that my father did. You know, one was that he always tried to sort of seek out people as better angels. He knew that people had different points of view, but he tried to get them to help them you know, work towards seeing the other person's point of view. So that was that was something he always did. He always had this sort of calm demeanor, no matter how stressful the situation was. I remember being in Northern Ireland and, you know, there's some places where there's tanks and barbed wire back in the 70s and 80s, um, you know, but he was always very, very calm. And I think in all those situations, he presented that that sense of calm. And then, you know, each person always told me a story about you know, and they use the word dignity all the time, that he respected right. my dignity, even if he disagreed with me. Yeah. You know, uh, in the strike of 87, every player rep uh, in the NFL was afraid that they were going to get cut, except me, because me and your dad had a great relationship. And when we went on strike, the first thing he said to me was, keep them together, Tunch, keep them together. And, you know, uh, during the strike, I remember I was looking for a football field to practice on. And your dad heard through the grapevine that I was looking for a field. So he calls me up and he says, uh, uh, he says, touch, there's a key on Marianne's desk to the practice field on the north side. You didn't get it from me. And, you know, our... Uh, I went into Mary because we weren't allowed to be at Three River Stadium. So I went into Marianne's office. I got the, his secretary and I, we started practicing uh, on, on the north side. And, uh, and th that was great. And, you know, one other thing, when we came back off strike, uh, your dad got me in his office and he said, don't you look a little worried? And I said, Mr. Rooney, I, I walked out with 45 guys and I, you know, because of the replacement players, I, I, don't, I don't think the players, every player is going to come back. And he said, well, Tunch, I will give every player that I cut two game checks. That's one eighth of the salary. And he said, I'll tell you before I cut them. And what, Art, that such integrity, but the, those two things, uh, explain that. Yeah, well, Tunch, he, uh, first of all, I think most of the labor lawyers involved in the league would, uh, would have had a heart attack if you told that story back when all this was going on. But, uh, you know, he, he really did uh, have a way of respecting people's opinion, even if they were on the other side from him. And obviously, when it came to the players, he had tremendous respect for the players' position in the game of football and and in situations like this, you know, he, he understood that there were going to be times where there would be disagreements and even strikes. And he, he wasn't going to allow that to, uh, you know, have relationships severed in a way where they were irreparable. Uh, you know, he believed continuing to, to talk through difficult times, 
you know, what, whatever side you were on. And uh, I think your stories there are great examples of that. You know, I, he told me you didn't get it from me. Yeah, so, um, so you're both fathers. What kind of things uh, have you said as a father or done where you catch yourself and think, wait, I'm turning into my dad, Jimmy first and then Art? Well, I have, I have three kids now that are all, well, my, my youngest is a senior in college, but two are out. And I think that the, the one humorous thing is, you know, I, they would say I give them too many speeches. And my father, you know, loved to give us speeches, but it really was a special you know, dinner time every night. We would have a conversation about politics or current events or something major that was going on in the world. And sometimes I would get tired of what my father was saying. And now I look back and think, wow, there was just such wisdom and insight there, you know, but sometimes I was too immature to hear it. I hope I'm in this somewhere in the same realm as my father with my kids. So I'm giving them some si some type of good advice, but they would certainly say I give, uh, give a fair amount of speeches to them. Same Our question. same question. You know, I think, uh, Tunch, he, uh, he did encourage all of us to speak our mind and, and you know, not be afraid to speak up. And obviously in a family of nine, that wasn't always easy. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I think that uh, that's something that I've uh, noticed that I try to do with my kids is encourage them to speak up and not be afraid to, to say what they're thinking. And uh, that, you know, that was important part of, uh, I think, our family growing up and hopefully my family, uh, you know, feels comfortable doing the same thing. You know, every time I'd call him Mr. Rooney, uh, he'd say, don't call me Mr. Rooney. I said, what, what, what should I call you? He said, DMR or the ambassador. And so I settled on the ambassador because I, I, I like that because uh, I didn't feel comfortable calling them DMR. Um, you know, it's been three years since your father passed. Uh, 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 what do you miss most, both of you guys? Art, starting with Art. Well, obviously, Tunch, you know, he uh, he was here every day. And so, you know, I, I had the opportunity to talk to him every day about, you know, whatever was going on in our lives. And so, uh, you know, being able to talk to him every day is certainly something I miss. And, and uh, you know, there's certainly a void there. But, uh, you know, the, the other things that, that I miss are uh, – you know, he would take us on trips every summer and, and uh, he, he loved to take trips. He loved to organize uh, trips like we took a Civil War trip one year. And of course, we did the Lewis, Lewis and Clark trip another year. And, you know, he loved to, to sort of plan an expedition for the whole family that, uh, you know, those are things that, uh, you know, we, we, we really miss. And, and uh, so there, you know, there are a lot of things that he did that, uh, that uh you know are, are irreplaceable hey, same question yeah i i would say fun strength i well it's the same in many ways you know art art had to, the office right across the hall from from my father and so i assume there was a, a lot of you know engagement there and and on on serious matters and you know with responsibility and, and the obligations to get things done i talked to my father every night you know, nine, 10 o'clock in the evening. And my mother would get so frustrated if we'd get into politics or, or something that was sensitive because they would get, uh, they'd become very voluminous, you know, conversations. But I think in a lot of ways for him, it was a way to sort of relax. He, you know, he always loved to be engaged, but it had nothing to do with football. So he, you know, he always loved to talk about, you know, the current events and, and as Art said, then those, those trips were really special. And, you know, the Lewis and Clark in particular, you know, my kids were, um, you know, just, you know, just getting old enough to enjoy going through the West and, and, you know, seeing the Bitterroot Mountains and the, the, the uh, Native American reservations and, you know, getting to the Pacific Ocean, you know, that's a memory that, that my children never, ever forget. And, and, you know, how my father sort of brought that together, you know, it was just a really special uh, experience. You know, I love talking to your dad. He'd always sit on the bench during the pregame, and I'd always sit by him, and we'd just talk and just shoot, shoot the breeze. And he was, you know, he was so kind and encouraging, and he was a great guy. You know, I, I miss him. I miss him. 
Well, thank you guys for uh, being part of this interview and thank you for the, uh, the stories and the reminiscing and God bless you and have a great Father's Day. Thanks, Tunch. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Thanks, Tunch.